supervisor's approval of a policy governing the funding, acquisition, and use of certain law enforcement equipment consistent with the criteria set forth in state law and approving the police department's use of equipment policy. Thank you, Mr. Young. Colleagues, uh, it's taken a few meetings, but I want to thank the police department for working with me in my office on continuing to hone the policy, uh, which as a result of our most recent conversations resulted in the policy that is now in the packet and has been circulated to all of you as of Thursday and is available, has been available since then for the public to see, which I uh, recommend to you. I am happy to answer any questions as to how we got here. And I uh, want to thank uh, Captain Jamarina and Lieutenant Kim and Asha Steve, Steves for their work. And they are here to answer any questions that we may have. Any questions, colleagues? If not, why don't we go to public comment on item number two that has been heard in this committee. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six times. Yes, members of the public who wish to speak on this item and are joining us in person should line up to speak at this time. For those listening remotely, please call 415-655-0001, enter the meeting ID of 2486-917, 6560, then press pound and pound again. Once connected, you will need to press star three to enter the speaker line. For those already in the queue, please continue the way until the system indicates you have been unmuted, and that will be your cue to begin your comment. Uh, we have uh, a member of the public in the chamber with us today. Uh, please come forward. Hi, my name is Arthur Koch. I'm a small business owner with a storefront and an artist living in District 9. Hillary Ronan is my supervisor, and I have an exhibit of paintings and drawings of the Mission District, Bernal Heights, and the Portola, where I live. I also sent her a letter in anticipation of this going to the full board. I'm a member of the San Francisco Friends Meeting, serving on the Peace and Social Concerns Committee. Uh, we have a Quaker meeting house just a couple blocks away here at 65 South 9th Street. So we're no strangers to City Hall or or the neighborhood that surrounds it. First of all, I want to thank you for the improvements to the proposed policy. I asked the Board of Supervisors to call for further improvements of the proposed military equipment use policy. We thank the SFPD for improving its proposed policy, authorized use definitions, but more improvement is still needed. The policy must describe both the circumstances in which weapons are used and how the weapons are used and when they should not be used. Uh, we need clear limits to broad definitions of authorized use. San Francisco should set a specific delivery date for its annual report that will align with the city's budget process. These weapons and the personal costs involving training on them and deploying them are a poor physical choice for San Francisco. San Francisco PD's proposed policy should allow SFPD to acquire equipment without prior board of supervisors' approval. If it runs low on any of its stock or wishes to replace any of its equipment, if this happens, this is exactly a situation in which more oversight is needed, not less. I appreciate that this proposed policy has improved under Chair Peskin's leadership, and I hope there will be continued improvements before the pros po proposed policy is heard by the full Board of Supervisors. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Uh, there being no further uh, speakers in the chamber, we can move to our uh, public comment call in line. Can we have our first caller, please? Hi, this is Jennifer Tu. I work for the American Friends Service Committee. Uh, first, I wanted to thank Chair Peskin and this committee for taking the time to uh, fully consider the proposed policy from SFPD. Uh, that, that work being the policy has improved uh, though I think the count is a little bit off, uh, the policy has been agendized six times, but it did not receive substantial comment during uh, all of those times. There's one part of the proposed policy iteration, the current one, that I'm uh, con particularly concerned with, 
and that's the exclusion of 375 of its 608 assault rifles. This misleads the public in thinking the police only have um, a little bit over 200 rifles rather than the over 600 assault rifles that it actually has. These weapons need to be included in the policy in full for two reasons. First, just this year, SFPD has killed three people with assault rifles. One of the people killed by SFPD was suicidal. The other two were men who were killed while they were on the ground grappling with each other over a knife. All 608 assault rifles need to have use policies describing when it is authorized or prohibited to use, including when someone is in a mental health crisis. Second, every type of equipment covered in the proposed use policy, each of them is required to have an annual report. These annual reports are required to include uh, a summary of the use and also to describe the fiscal impact. The fiscal impact includes not just the initial acquisition cost, uh, but the ongoing cost as well. The, the law is clear that that needs to include personnel time, including training and maintenance. Uh, and we know that that means that all of those ongoing costs are primarily going to be around personnel. The public deserves to know the fiscal impact of all these deadly weapons including all 608 assault rifles, in addition to the 15 submachine guns and 64 machine guns. I hope the Rules Committee will continue to consider SFPD's use policy and ask how each of the weapons may be used and what changes to the policy could better safeguard the public. Thanks very much for all of your work on this. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Um, Good morning, Supervisors. This is Regina Sneed. I'm a member of District 2 Supervisor, Stefani's district. Um, I wanted to, to uh, step back a bit and remind us what uh, AB 481 requires. That was the law that was passed in recognition that the public is deeply concerned with the militarization of the police. The law sets forth some minimum requirements to de demilitarize the police by disclose, disclosing what military equipment is owned and the associated cost, and by providing a policy for the appropriate use of this equipment, and by requiring an annual report on its deployment and cost. So this ordinance um, has gone through about six iterations now. Um, I want to thank the police department and Supervisor Peskin for um, their engagement uh, to make this a better ordinance. Um, I think it's getting there. I support the comments made by the previous speaker about the assault weapons. I really think it's, it, it's confusing to the public if we don't have those assault weapons all reported on in this annual report, even if uh, standard use is not required to be uh, included in that. And I wanted to to uh, harken back to two of my previous comments that I've made. Um, I really do think it really is important to have this ordinance tied to the uh, budget process. I think it'll allow the public and um, the board members an opportunity to really um, use the information that's going to be in this annual report to the public's benefit and to make sure that we are uh, engaging in the type of discussion around uh, what AB 481 requires. And I'm a big fan of uh, private right of action, so I've mentioned this Speaker before. Speaker time has elapsed. Thank you. Yes. I just check, uh, can we have our next caller, please? Uh, can you hear me okay? Uh, please proceed. Great. Uh, David Pilpel, uh, good morning. I just wanted to uh, appreciate the work that Supervisor Peskin and his staff, uh, others behind the scene, and the uh, police department have uh, made on this uh, policy, uh, the improvements, fine-tuning, checking it carefully. Um, so I support the uh, policy and, and the ordinance as most recently amended. Um, and on a somewhat Unrelated topic, I was very sad to learn this morning that uh, Crispin Hollings, most recently of the Sheriff's Department, passed away last week. He was a wonderful person, and he will be missed. Thanks very much for listening. Thank you. Can we have our next caller? Hello. My name is Paul Briley, 
And I live in San Francisco and Baby Harness Point. I represent all of us or none. I want to thank you for the improvements to the proposed policy, but I do ask the Board of Supervisors to call for further improvements of the proposed military equipment use policy to more fully define authorized use for all weapons, including the 600 assault rifles. These weapons are misused, and this policy does not safeguard the public's welfare. I am a resident in the neighborhood, and I realize that officers ride around with these assault rifles. Um, so if you could clearly define the authorized use, I've literally been stopped and frisked and at gunpoint with an assault rifle for loitering. Um, please define the authorized use because these weapons are misused. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that was our last uh, phone in call. Uh, commenter. Thank you. We'll close public comment on item number two. And let me start by um, saying this has been an interesting exercise that has been foisted upon us by uh, our now city attorney uh, and his then colleagues in the California State Legislature Assembly Bill 481, which applies not only to San Francisco, but cities and counties are doing this around the state of California. Uh, and uh, we've, I actually spent a significant amount of time looking at other nascent policies in different counties and in Oakland and around the Bay Area. Um, the speakers are right. This is an ongoing process. This will be done on an annual basis by uh, this and future Board of Supervisors. And part of my thinking, and I think part of the interaction that I had with the department was really trying to create the baseline uh, for future generations of boards to be able to measure against and to fine tune uh, over time. Um, as it relates to uh, synchronizing this process with the budget process, I would offer the following observations, which is everything is synchronized with the budget process. Uh, the budget process is pretty much an ongoing process every year. Uh, it's kind of starting for next year right about now. So um, the way I envision this, uh, we'll be getting this report um, before a budget is adopted. I mean, we do it every 12 months, and if there are needs to adjust things monetarily, we'll have that opportunity. Um, as the private right of action, uh, while there are certain rare instances where private rights of action, I think, are warranted as a matter of policy, uh, they are few and far between, and I don't think that this one rises to it, at least not yet. Uh, I think the fundamental notion under AB 481 is to give an independent oversight body, in this case the San Francisco Board of Supervisors, the ability to monitor and make adjustments as necessary. Uh, and I, for one, uh, was not, uh, did not cotton to the notion of a uh, private right of action, uh, at least not yet and hopefully not ever. Uh, in this process, I think it was really about balancing um, authorized use and purpose knowing that we live in a world that is full of January 6th insurrections and uh, pretty crazy one-off things that can happen that we need to be prepared for uh, in the same, at the same time uh, that we don't want to see, uh, nor frankly have we seen in quite some time, uh, displays of militarization that are not necessary. Um, I think the PD fundamentally gets that, um, but this process now and in the future will allow the elected civilian body to oversee that. Um, so with that, uh, colleagues, I am prepared. Oh, Supervisor Chan, my apologies. Thank you, Chair Peskin. I um, want to first thank you for your leadership on this and taking the time. I think we've been having this discussion for quite some time now. I really appreciate also that SFPD has been working with our team and really taking our feedback. Um, we have asked specifically 
you know, in your annual report to not just include the time of use and the purpose of use, but also if any injury sustained. And I think that was with the goal of trying to understand the impact that these equipment have on San Franciscans or just anyone um, being in the city and when any type of incidents occur um, that require SFPD using military equipment, what kind of impact, especially physical impact on, on the people uh, in the city. So we appreciate the feedback uh, that you have taken and willing to accept. And so um, I look forward to be supporting to this policy today, um, but also uh, we'll continue to monitor the annual report and being able to have an open dialogue and ongoing conversation about how do we address and adjust the inventory and whether it's necessary or you know how do we expand if necessary for to balance the public safety goals that we have and i do agree with uh, chair peskin mentioning january 6 uh, as a good example of seeing that we do need our police force to be ready in the events that we we are under attack physical attack as a city so thank you um, and thank you chair peskin Thank you, Supervisor Chan. Seeing no other names on the roster, I will make a motion to send the policy as revised with a positive recommendation to the full Board of Supervisors on that motion. A roll call, please. Yes, on that motion. Supervisor Chan. Aye. Chan, aye. Vice Chair Mandelman. Mandelman, aye. Chair Peskin. Aye. Peskin, aye. The motion passes without objection. And now we get to go grapple with the Sheriff's Department. Uh, not today, but soon. Thank you, Ms. Steves and uh, Council.